Hey Sons Fey Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria. Today we're going to take a look at this very lovely dress, which is based on images found in the southern region of the Holy Roman Empire, or the Germany region, more specifically Swabia, Austria, and Bavaria in the late 1400s. For this project, we are looking at Germany in the late medieval slash early Renaissance era of Europe. This is a very large and diverse region. This specific dress will often be referred to by reenactors and recreationists as a Swabian dress. That means originating in the Swabian circle, which in this map is the yellow region. However, this dress is not only found in the Swabian circle, it's also seen in Bavaria and Austria, as you can see kind of like throughout that southern region of this like map of imperial circles of the Holy Roman Empire. In fact, my absolute favorite depiction of this sort of generic dress style is from Austria. And this is the Babenberg family tree. This triptych depicts Leopold III of the Babenbergs. The triptych was created between 1489 and 1492 by Hans Part and a couple other artists. Leopold III was previously the Margrave of Austria on the eastern border of the Holy Roman Empire. I've been literally obsessed with these dresses for years because they're just so fun. Some of the unique details include these three-quarter sleeves with some varying attachments along them. We have a semi-fitted bodice, which is belted, and we have an opening at the front. And then we have some really fantastic headwear that varies quite a bit. So in this particular project, I'm going to be focusing on a couple of things for the headwear, and that includes a wrapped linen, you can see kind of some variations here, as well as a little fringe that hangs down in the back of the hair over some braids, which I think is just so cute. And it's kind of a unique look that we particularly see in this region in this time period. And I just really like investigating things that are a little bit weird or unique. And I want to note that a lot of these supplemental images I've included here are from throughout that southern region of the Holy Roman Empire. I created this dress using my existing standard medieval dress pattern. I altered the sleeve so it was shorter and also much smaller so you can have those little tie points in there. And then I used the pattern for the dress pretty much straight up with the exception in case you guys are using my pattern and you want to like alter it for this. I just made it a little bit less fitted in the waist. And due to the limited amount of fabric I had, I only added one gore, which is to the back. I just made it really large. And then of course the neckline is that deep V that you see commonly in all of the portraits. And I am using 100% wool here in my favorite color, which is a pink fuchsia. Now, a detail that I love in some of the linen head wraps from this era is pleating. I've done this before in another project. I did that pleating by hand. This time I decided to do it by machine so it would go a lot faster. Basically to do this, I created a linen veil, which is just a big old rectangle of fabric and I started pleating it. So I folded the fabric over, I measured to make sure each pleat was the same width, I sewed that together there, and then ironed it out so that it created a pleat. Um, I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing here, but you can keep doing this and playing with it and create as many pleats as you like. I created seven for this dress. I really love the weird fringe thing, which I found is called a Geffrens. I decided to make mine in colors that matched my dress. So I've got a few shades of like fuchsia, sort of a merlot, burgundy, a lighter pink. And I'm creating this by wrapping these around this book that I use for so many projects. And here I'm using it in a totally different way, right? As a template. So I'm just wrapping the fibers, I'm using crochet thread, and I'm creating my fringe that way. So once I've got little bundles of fibers here, I'm actually just tying them in simple knots onto this ribbon, which I'm gonna use to attach the geffrens around my head. 
If you want to see how I make my chemises, you can check out these other videos here. I also have a PDF tutorial on how I created this particular chemise style. For this particular dress, I just rolled up the sleeves a little bit so they would fit underneath my dress sleeves. And as you can see here, the chemise is about just below my knees. You can make chemises different lengths. This is a, a fairly standard length, I think. So we're doing two looks here because we're doing two different hair pieces. The first look is inspired by those paintings or illustrations where they have the braids and then some sort of like flower crown or something around the braids. The reason I chose this laurel crown is because in the medieval reenactment society I'm in, I'm in an order that is represented by laurel leaves and I thought it would be really cool to kind of put that together. So the dress itself, as I said, is made out of 100% wool. This particular dress is unlined and I edged all of the openings with a black velvet ribbon. The sleeves tie in two places. So you get that poofing of the chemise through the sleeves there, which I think is so cool. The front of the dress has that deep V opening. And then as I wear this, it wants to sort of like come together more at the top, which I do see in a lot of the period illustrations. So depending on the fit of the dress, it may be like more open or come together a little bit more. It's just kind of up to like how fitted the dress is. And this one is not tightly fitted, but it's also not all that super loose. So here I'm going to show you sort of how both of the headpieces go on by taking one hairstyle down and doing up the next one. For the first hairstyle, the Geffrens was sort of draped there alongside the braids, which I had pinned up around the front of my head. So now I'm just taking those down. I used bobby pins because they're really quick. But if you want to see how they might have done this in period by basically sewing the hair to their head, you can check out this other video. For the next look, I am moving the braids so that they are forming loops here sort of around my face, as we see in so many of the period images, and then I'm just bobby pinning them right there. I did Dutch braids, you could do French braids too and get the same sort of effect. That gives me some texture at the top of my head to pin the braids into. Next, I'm adding a cap. There are a few different styles of this sort of like white linen under cap that we see throughout medieval portraits. This is just a very basic one that can be used. And it's basically a little piece of cloth, a little cap that ties on around the head. Once again, I am using the super cool fringe. This time I'm just putting it on over that little cap. So it's gonna hang down underneath my headpiece. This is how we get that really cool volume that you see in a lot of the images. This is called a wool staub, and it's basically just a stuffed roll that sort of goes on your head. So I'm pinning it onto that cap and then I'm gonna be able to wrap the veil over top of it. Okay, now we have the white linen veil. Because I did the style with the little pleats in the front, I'm just gonna make sure that that is in fact in the front. There are a number of ways that you can wrap these onto your head. So a way that I really like is to first like wrap it around my head and then pin it right there in the back. That way it makes sure it's secure around my head. And then what I'm doing here is taking the rest of it and sort of wrapping it and tying it up in the back of my head. You see these wrapped a bunch of different ways, so I don't think there's really like one specific method that you have to adhere to. And admittedly, I think I do a little bit of a better job of this when I'm in my house with my full mirror set up, but I think this will be good enough to show you. So this is our second complete look. I think both headpieces look so good. I'd love to try even more of them, but I think this gives you a pretty good idea of a couple of ways that you could wear this type of dress in the late 1400s. And again, the region that this is from is the south part of the Holy Roman Empire, sort of the southeast region. 
So we're looking at the Swabian circle as well as Bavaria and Austria. This dress style will have a lot of similarities with others in varying regions because, you know, fashion sort of like follows influences throughout a region. I think this dress is really, really fun. <laughs> I think it looks so cool and it's actually fairly simple to make. So if you yourself are going to be doing some sort of medieval and Renaissance reenactment, if you're going to the Renaissance festival, whatever it is, I think this is a fairly simple dress design to make and yet it looks so stunning and so beautiful. And if you do want my full instructions on the chemise and the standard medieval dress, which is kind of like my base for all the variations in this whole region for this time period, I'll link to where I have those PDFs in my shop as well. And whether or not you need those to help you, I still would love to see whatever it is you come up with. So if you were inspired and you've done your own project, based on this region, I would love to see it. You can find me on all the social medias as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon who help me so much to continue creating content like this. I hope you all have an absolutely magical day and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.